Nazi Germany was filled with the most cruel and inhumane people in Germany's history. However, no one could match the female Nazi guard called Ilse Koch. She was a sadist who didn't have a drop of humanity left in her. What did Ilse Koch do? Was she a demon in disguise? What you are about to see and hear is one of the most graphic and disturbing things that actually happened in Nazi Germany. Ilse Koch acted as a guard over the concentration camp at Buchenwald. This is where she tortured, killed, mutilated, and constantly taunted inmates. Due to her sadistic fetishes, she was given the nickname, the Beast of Buchenwald. She had married an equally sadistic man called Karl Otto Koch, who quickly rose through the ranks to become commander serving at several concentration camps. She was intrigued by her husband's cruel atrocities and crimes and wanted to support his actions. This is not even the start. After her marriage in 1936, Karl Otto was made commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp. This is one of the larger camps assigned for exterminating Jews, homosexuals, and other victims. The iron gates to the camp read a sadistic message translated as, to each their own or more bluntly, you'll get what you deserve. Due to her husband's high reach, she got the opportunity to get involved on a more personal level, becoming a guard, and soon gained a reputation for being even more sadistic than her husband. She had a particular sadistic interest where she specifically seeked out tattooed prisoners. She would ride her house through the camp and would find prisoners with distinctive tattoos. What she did to them next is more than horrifying. The prisoners she captured would be stripped of his or her skin. Yes, you heard that right. She preserved the tattooed skin that she liked as souvenirs, then she killed them and incinerated their bodies. She kept many of the patches of skin as Moro's trophies in her home. These skin samples played a crucial role in her later trials. Above everything else, she loved watching people tremble in fear when they were informed about them being sent to gas chamber. Surviving prisoners recall that she always seemed the most excited when children were about to be sent to gas chamber. She loved the fact that children were dying gruesome deaths. Her love for human skin and the horrifying arts and crafts projects she used it for is well known. Whenever a prisoner she disliked was killed, their skin was specifically dyed and stored. These were later turned over to Ills, who would later turn them into book covers, gloves, and lampshades for herself and other officers. More revolting was her hobby of making shrunken heads and skulls for display in her house. Her most favored item out of all these was a handbag that was made for her using tattooed skin. While many of these items have been noted by others, none of the skin lamps were ever recovered. She had this fetish where she enjoyed making prisoners hurt one another. If she couldn't find a tattoo that she liked, she would sometimes make one of the prisoners tattoo another in a manner that she liked. She would then send that prisoner to be killed and his slashed skin procured. She loved sexually taunting and torturing the inmates. She would go out of her way to wear very short skirts, without any underwear, and behave sexually around the starved and tortured male prisoners. She would watch them perform exhausting activities or flaunt and prance like a movie star. She would also force the prisoners to perform sexual acts on each other. And because of this, the inmates began calling her the Witch or Bitch of Buchenwald. She also displayed human organs from her victims, which included lungs, brains, hearts, and livers, which were all preserved and used as decorations in her home and in the homes of other guards. She also used money stolen from the prisoners to build a sports arena where she could ride her horses and hold other sporting events. She also slept with a lot of people at the concentration camp. She was an infomaniac. She was said to have an open marriage of sorts. She also had sexual relationships with doctors and guards and had several children possibly by different fathers. His husband was not only okay with this, but he was also pretty open himself. They would often hold orgies for the SS officers and guards at their home they lived in which looked out over the concentration camp. It was suggested that Ilse's husband had homosexual tendencies. He had sexual contact with both genders. This was supported by the fact that he caught syphilis while commanded Ilse never had it. What happened to Bill's cock and her husband? Were they punished? To see what happened to them, watch our next video. What do you think of Bill's cock and her vulgar and inhumane ways of torture? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for more updates and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.